All right, welcome to Semi Pro Football News. It's me, Andre Brooks. We got the Officer Coordinator uh, for the Arkansas Punishers, Terry Jordan, up in here. What's up, Terry? Hey, man, living life, brother. Just, uh, I've been knowing Terry for a while. Uh, we played them uh, before and, uh, when he had the Cabot Bucks at Arkansas Bulls. Uh, but, Terry, uh, tell them a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Uh, I am originally from Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, I played high school um, for three years at Little Rock Mills, went to Cabot my mm -hmm. senior year. Uh, did not play my senior year at Cabot. Okay. Um, let's see. I played semi-pro my senior year of high school when I was 17. In, uh, oh, you did? They let you play at 17? Well, let you, you know. Yeah. But I actually played in against a lot of teams from this league. The extra, the Silverbacks, played against Pat. Okay. Um, I was Back then, I was probably like 185, 195 back then, so I was a little different build. But okay. uh, after that, um, I took a couple years off of football, and then I... Uh, uh, I went to coach for the Arkansas Ducks in 2013. Um, uh, somebody had approached me after the Ducks. Hold on, one. hold on, hold on. Oh, you you can to quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell me a little bit about yourself. But when, when did you when did you get into uh, semi pro football? Like when did you get into it? Like when um, did you decide? I know you said 17. What year was that? When did you decide? Like, ooh, I'm gonna play semi pro football. I'm not gonna try to go to college and play during college or gotcha. anything like that. When did you get into semi-pro football, you know? Okay. Uh, 2010. 2010. So about 11 years ago. About 11 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, how long did you play, you know, before you became a coach and owner and stuff like that? Uh, I played and coached for a couple of years, so probably three years. Okay. And then uh, I played um, – I coached my first year. I was just the co head coach. Okay. And then I played another year when, when I won a championship. What was the first team you played for? Uh, it was the, the uh, North Little Rock Spartans. North Little Rock Spartans. Yeah. Um, I know you had your own team. You had the Kevin Bucks because we played you. What made you say, okay, I want to get my own team. Just one. I want to have my own team. Man, I, I fell into it, really. Um, I was coaching for the Ducks, and that was my first opportunity. Um, I had thought about playing and coaching for – uh, Broderick Knight, I appreciate him for everything he did for me. But mm -hmm. um, and then some guys came to me and asked for help. They had their own, they started their own team, and mm -hmm. man, it just turned into they left and I stayed. And there was a lot of guys there, so that's where I met my uh, one of my quarterbacks, Darius Robinson, and okay. we've been a good match ever since, man. Best friends. Oh, okay. So what made you okay? Say I'm okay. I'm not gonna own my team anymore. Okay, I'm gonna transition to the Arkansas Punishers? Well, actually, uh, at first it started with the um, Arkansas Hawks, and I had been the okay. last two years with them, Reggie Arnold and Jermaine Anderson. I had decided that I was kind what, of... Was that team at Pine Bluff? Yeah, based out of Pine Bluff. What, yeah. what happened to it? What, like, what happened to it? Because I was going to try to play for them one year, and I, they just disappeared. You know? Yeah, well, that's a lot of the guys from that team. Um, after last season, you know, there was a shortened season with the, uh, the, yeah, COVID, with the COVID. COVID. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, ended up yeah, playing yeah. eight games. Uh, we lost one game early, or kind of in the middle of it, to the Bolts, and then they had, like, the little COVID Bowl yeah. championship, and we had beaten them 26-0. to zero. Um, okay. And that was the last game of the Hawks, man. Um, good mm -hmm. team. Think I could not. I would not be the coach I am without Reggie Arnold and Jermaine Anderson. Okay, okay. Uh, the Dean transitioned to the Arkansas Punishers. Uh, when did you decide to do that? Were you kind of late to be honest? Um, I was really done with semi pro. I'm in my last semester of college, mm -hmm. so I'm uh, I'm getting a sports management degree. Oh, okay. So uh, I, one of the players, they had a workout, and I gave Darius a ride. And Kalen Kelly Brew, man, he uh, he walked up to me when we were at the sand pit in Little Rock, and he's like, so what you talking about, man? What you trying to do? Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I'll give it another year. So I I got committed probably around October, November fully, and then uh, mm -hmm. I've been full running ever since. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, you're the officer coordinator for Arkansas Punishers. Did they choose you for the position, or you know how my pro is, you know, they can be like, okay, I want to coach the offense. Actually, no. As a matter of fact, they didn't really um, – I, I, like I said, I didn't really want to coach anything. I just wanted to kind of help out. And yeah. then uh, just with everything with Pee Wee, with the other coaches, they couldn't make it as much. Justin um, 
great owner. He was going to be the offensive coordinator and the head coach. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. It just happened, man. I just kind of took over, and you know, and whenever you got that type of mentality, people yeah. follow you. So yeah, yeah. I just became, you know, became the guy. Okay, okay. You the uh, offensive coordinator uh, for the Punishers. Are you involved with the recruiting? We out picking players. Like you know, I know Chris. He recruits. Do right. you know when he have an offensive player? And do he come to you like, hey, I think this is a good fit, or? Do he just solidly just say, okay, this person be on a team or, you know, how, how do that work? So the funny part about uh, mine and Chris's relationship as recruiters is we recruited against each other for years, mm-hmm. you know, like to try to who, who has the most talent on their team. Mm-hmm. And so we know a lot of the same guys that we want or kind mm-hmm. of like really good talent. And in semi-pro, it's so hard to get, I won't say good players, but more notable players to play. Mm-hmm that um, most of the guys you get are guys off the couch, which yeah. is perfectly fine. But me and Chris kind of go through a process where we talk like, what do you think of this guy? And mm-hmm. uh, mostly it's just recruiting linemen. Because yeah. most of the guys on the Punishers, have, either we've had a great time to evaluate and playing against them or coaching them, mm-hmm. or you know, just guys that you know is a dog. Yeah. So... Who who are your key players? So who 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 are the key players that we should be checking out? I know when y'all played the Vipers, that was your y'all first game, but it was a preseason game. Right. You know y'all know y'all was trying to be careful, nobody get injured, and you know. And, we we uh, gave a, a little skeleton crew, kind of like play yeah. plays wise. We didn't really run any motions or anything. We kind of kept mm-hmm. it pretty basic. Uh, I mean, we ran hell, heck. I mean, we ran probably five seven plays, but yeah. just kind of mixed it up. Uh, some key players, I mean, honestly, from the Vipers game, you can tell when Jonathan Parks has the ball in his hand, he is mm-hmm. a, a man. A is that the quarterback? Or no, that's uh, our receiver. Our receiver, okay. Jonathan okay. Parks, yeah. He's 6'2", uh, 6'3", six, six six um, played at Arizona Western College. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, went to North Little Rock High School. And the quarterback and him are really close friends. Kalen Cooper went to North okay. Little Rock. Obviously, uh, Darius Robinson has signed with uh, the Salt Lake City Senate. Um, a a triple A semi pro team and he'll be getting paid out there to go play. That's that's good. Like there are some teams out there, semi pro football teams, minor league teams that pay. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I hope Arkansas get to that point. Uh, you know, one day in the future that they, you know, players get paid, you know, and I was thinking, man, like you know, it starts with a vision. But I was thinking about also like man, like need a feel for semi pro football, like a complex for the games, have games, you know. So we don't be worried about the high school, play here, play there. I, I was thinking about that for future wise, you know, for get sure. some land, get build something, you know, find some investors that'll do it, sponsors, whoever, you know, just yeah. gotta research and find out how to do it. So, you know, so we can cut all that out. All the middle stuff, yeah. Yeah, cut all that with the high school, let them have their feels. I used to hate going to ask the coach. But see, when I played, when I had the Arkansas Bulls, the coach there, he was more excited than I was that it was a semi-pro football team there. And I told him about it. And I had told him, what was funny was, I told him about it like it was like four or five years before. I was like, hey, uh, his name's Coach Haddock, head coach. Uh, pretty good, great coach, man. He took McGee out to the championship against, uh, I think, Palatsky, somebody. But they were good. They was good. It was a good team. One of those good private school teams, you know. Got oh, all the yeah. players on the team. Oh, yeah. So, but uh, great coach. Um, I had told my division like years before that. And then I had moved. Then I came back with division. And he was all open arms about it, man. He let us, he let us practice on the practice field. I mean, practice field. Uh, even on the game field, he said even when it rained, we could practice. He gave me access to everything. I could have film, man. I tried to do. I tried, man. Terry, I tried to do everything. You know what I'm saying? I tried to do. He let us have just everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you was, you was at the first game because mm-hmm. we we played y'all, and but it's just you know the barbecue. Yeah, I, yeah. Game. See, I tried, I tried to set it up like a real game, like tailgating yeah. and stuff like that. But you know, but. I wish there was more tailgating in semi-pro. I think yeah. that, that's something that really misses out. It can, it can be that it, it starts with a vision. It starts with just putting everything in place and trying to treat it like real football organization. You know what I'm saying? And have Absolutely. the thought of like, 
man, I'm gonna have a tailgate, street, the, the people you set up tailgate, barbecue, blah, 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 I'll set up, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, but it was just trying to find the players that would listen, committed. You know, if you only have a few that do, and you have the, about a lump sum that don't. You know what I'm saying? This is my pro. But it's getting better, you know what I'm saying? And then coaches that actually care. Like, I think yeah. that's that's the one thing about, a, I'd say at least all the coaches I know in this league, like, whether or not they like each other is irrelevant. Every single one of them are doing this for free. Like, you, yeah. you when you're an owner, you're losing money so exactly. much money. And players don't know that. Or they don't know or don't care because yeah. it's, they just want to play ball. Yeah. I mean, kids, like our kids – we pay two hundred and fifty dollars for them to play Pee Wee. Yeah. So you, but you can't pay a, a hundred dollar player fee. Like you're yeah, your own you know. person. And so you know, semi pro, semi pro, and just hopefully, just one day, it would become like, you know, just it, have the own like, the own like, how can I say it? Like uh, the own um, self sustaining like of uh, like headquarters. To, oh, my yeah. pro fo- to my pro football headquarters was so right. my pro team report where you know where you know the headquarters they give the team certain money to pay the players and blah 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 just all kinds of event just all like kinds really, of things yeah. you know, all kinds of things but but uh, but it was we was gonna have a big game this Saturday but it got canceled but right. when we talking about the schools For and sure. everything like that that happens now, I was talking to somebody the other well, it was on semi pro football talk. That me and Brandon McKeever, uh, we do for on Wednesdays. It, it, Eric, you can go on YouTube and check it out. It's, it's on there. And uh, we and we were just talking about uh, how things happen in semi pro football and how people just don't know what semi pro football go through. Like you say, guys right. playing for free, coaches doing stuff for free. Uh, uh, but you still have. To, but to me, when I played, man, what made it fun for me is why I took it serious, man. I played and it was so fun. I, t- I played it. I did it like I was in the NFL, man. I thought I was in the NFL, man. I went, I'm out at the uh, field, always working out, training, doing this, doing that, and man. It's funny you say that. So what I have here is second level stats from our game against Tahlequah. Yeah. Like for example, on third and fourth down, we were six for fourteen, so just under fifty percent on third and fourth down, mm. uh, and they were. They were 5 of 20. So they were right at 25%. What, uh, how much, is that also stats for running backs also? It, it shows, uh, so what this is, this shows it's two-sided. So, or, you know, we've got multiple sides. So. Do you know how, do you remember how in Arkansas Democrat, I don't know, how old are you? About, about 28. 28, so do, they probably still do it in Arkansas Democrat because they, they have a certain area of sports where they have all the stats from the running backs. Passing a receiver. Yeah. I see. I want to do something like that, but it's so hard trying to get everybody stats and everybody be like, "Oh, coaches reporting yeah. stat." Because hey, like you say, you or know, player of the game. Yeah, you know. My suggestion was always have the opposite coach tell you the players of the game. Yeah, you know. Just like, I just because it's unbiased. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, just anybody, man. But you know, it's just so hard just to get everybody on board or whatever. Just hope that it happens. You know. But the game got canceled. Right. Okay. So that pushes y'all back. Postpone. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of pushes y'all back with everybody that has a game Saturday. So they mm-hmm. get suited up, booted up, and hopefully, you know, they have their games. I don't know what, what goes on. But March 20th, y'all next opponent will be the extra. And you know, extra has a big backfield. They do. A big backfield. Are y'all ready for that? And they, you know, the extra been around for a long time. Oh, yeah. They've played, been, they veterans. played them 10 years ago. Yeah, they veterans. Yeah. They've been around for a long time. And this year, I think they're more hungry <laughs> than they have been in years. They got a chip on their shoulder. They yeah, think they're pe- ready. Pe- people are people are counting them out because yeah. they everybody talks about the Punishers. Everybody talks about the Bulldogs. Everybody talks about the Bolts and the Silverbacks. But the extra are like this. Like they they've been this powerhouse in Arkansas for yeah. so long, and it's like they're just forgotten. But how would, how are we going to try to deal with them? Do I think we can? Also, I would say that our linebacking core is probably our strongest and biggest. I mean, we've got uh, Denarius Dooley is 6'3", six, 6'4", six, six, 260 pounds, and he runs really fast as, as a middle linebacker. Okay. He's another impact player for our defense, and I wish I could have him for offense. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. he, he runs like the wind. He can cover. He can tackle. And he's he's a form tackler. Like, he takes pride in being and doing everything right, the little things, and that's mm-hmm. what 
you need in the middle linebacker is a quarterback on the defense, you know. Mm-hmm. But do I think that uh, they'll test us? Absolutely. I mean, between Eli and – I mean, they've got a great linebacker in core too, actually. Well, offense and defense. Very Thanks. good offense and defense. Um, but I know the offense, you know, um, hitting them running backs and they can put fresh legs in there. Yeah. <laughs> like they got five running backs. I think they got like five running backs that's over 220 pounds. That's tough. And they trucking the ball. And so um, – I think they got one guy who who's over six foot. He's six two or something like that. He, he like tell me about. I think that's Ace Dorsey. And so and then number they, three. And he's then he's got, a good. He's a very good back. Then they got the quarterback. You know, uh, got some good legs on him. So they got a great good offense that, you know, uh, that can wear and tear on your defense. So I hope y'all defense coordinator whoever that is, has a game plan and ready. You know. Oh so, yes. But the oh, offense yeah. versus the defense. Their defense. Um, do you know any players that you got to watch on their defense that you got to make sure that They're, that young man Cadillac, yeah, linebacker Cadillac, mm-hmm. that man can play ball. I heard. Um, they, uh, I mean, just all their linebacker, their front seven, they have a great front seven, like, mm-hmm. and they've got depth because they have so many big guys, like, mm-hmm. and then they've got athletes like, uh, like, uh, Demaya Newman and his twin brother. They call themselves the Bald Heads. Um, <laughs> Good guys, you know, mm-hmm. some uh, some Greek Greek brothers out there for all those people who are Greek. That's some iotas. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, like, they've got a great defense. I'll say that, um, and they they talk trash with the best of them, and that's and we love that because I mean that's if it's in our game plan, we love talking, you know. Yeah. But but when it comes down to being on the field, we're gonna show up. We're gonna be respectful. And we're gonna respect our opponent. We don't think that anybody is not worth our time or not worth our effort. And um, when these games fully do get played with the governor pushing or, you know, with the mask mandate and all that stuff, Mm. it's going to be a great season between everybody because the extra, they're not going to lay down for anybody. They're going to come with it and they're coached Mm. well. Uh, Coach Mm. Nelson coached well. Eli, I know he does a lot of the coaching too. Um, I mean, it's just a – We'll be. Re- we got to be ready. But they so ready. They ready this year. I, I just. Fact. I just. Yeah. They ready this year, and y'all ready. Uh, I think just every team is ready, and I just hope that and pray that that it just don't go like last year. You know, man. Man, they have to poop this wiped out, and the season's over with. But I don't think it will. I think it's just bumping the road, you know, and the schools. Like I said, we need our own field field to play on or public and, field. Yeah. That's where Arkansas is so far behind all these other states. Is that like in Oklahoma, they have, in Missouri, they have fields and fields for all yeah. these semi pro teams to play on because they're park fields. Like, yeah. and they'll have, um, like in Missouri, they've got like five back to back fields that you can just play on any of them. Mm-hmm. Where, like, even if you wanted to play and I wanted to play, we could both play the same day if we wanted to. Mm-hmm. And if Arkansas ever wants to get their stuff together, they would do something like that. They don't that. want you playing at these parks. Right. You right. know, but I'm, I know down in McGee, we got a park called Bellfield Park. Mm-hmm. And it's just a big field. We used to practice on it. It's a big field, but it just had holes in it, you know. And I, right. I'm, you know, if I wanted to play on it, maybe I would have had to go through it and fill all, find every hole and fill it up. And man, but like I said, Coach Haddock came through for me that year and said that I could play on the field. And but you know, things just went. But I look <laughs> so. And and know. that's the nature of semi pro. Yeah, it, it is. But I just hope and pray just one day, just semi pro, like in other states. They playing on TV. They playing on TV like regular football, like yeah. like European football, CFL football. Come on, ESPN. Like they playing on TV. I'm like, but we just don't see it down here. You know what I'm saying? Our ESPN, what we see coverage is different. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so. Well, and also in co- like commitment wise, like you talk about players being committed and practicing yeah. and stuff. In Oklahoma, in Texas, yeah. they have 40, 50 to 100 players in practice. Like, yeah, you got to fight for your spot every day. Linemen, they have. Them guys be serious. Bukus. What? Like, even if they don't train every day, even yeah. the good players, they still show up to practice. They be, like, if not. They be serious. But, yep. We got Terry Jordan here, officer coordinator for Arkansas Punishers. Hey, the game got canceled, but hey, the journey still continues, man. You know, good luck on the season, everybody. This is semi pro football news. Andre Brooks, Terry Jordan, Punisher. Arkansas Punishers, offensive, offensive coordinator. The next game is March 20th uh, against Arkansas Extra. Uh, that it would be 
you know, the time be announced and uh, and where they'll play at. You know, hopefully it'll be the, still the same place. I don't know. But uh, just hopefully everything goes as planned. You know, the season. Don't give up on us. Don't give, don't give up on us. Just continue. Just continue with us with this journey. And, hey, like I said, it's in my pro football news. We get you the scores and we're going to get you the highlights. So we out of here. Let's get it and let's stay focused.